So I'm proud of my nose. I'm proud of what it does. It's, uh, it's, the thing is, I gotta keep like a three foot radius around me, because if at any point I turn, pow, somebody's dead. And I don't have no responsible. I don't want that. So I'm proud of my nose. I feel bad for you white, white, white people. I'm sorry. This is like the smallest, cutest little noses. It's so cute. Like, you hear this? That's breathing. I just inhaled six liters of air. How do you guys do it? Well, like, you work out too much. How do you work out? How do you run? It's called breathing. Try it sometime. I recommend it. On the way here, I was, uh, I was driving, and I saw some shoes hanging on power lines. You guys ever seen that? You ever seen just shoes hanging there? It doesn't make any sense. So I used to think, well, the only things that can get up there are birds, and I've never seen, like, a bird wear a pair of Air Jordans. And if I have, they're not stupid enough to leave those air doors just hanging around like that. But they don't do that. So I thought, well, maybe angels. But angels falling from skies, they wear Adidas. Everybody knows that. So I later found out, I don't know if this is true, uh, but I heard that's where people sell drugs, is in those areas. Which, like, it really doesn't make any sense. It's kind of the mind of a druggie at work here. It's like, we could exchange contact information. No, I know exactly what we are going to do. We're going to take their shoes, give them the drugs, throw it up there, but get this. They're gonna keep coming back to us, hoping we'll give them their shoes. Done deal, million dollar business right there. Let's go back to Harold and Kumar. Harold and Kumar start a business. Yeah, and also, what about if you wanna buy drugs? Are you just gonna go up to places and like, I wanna buy some weed? No, whoa, 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 buddy. I am not a drug dealer. This area is not sanctioned by the state of Utah. Now you throw some shoes up there, we gotta hit the store. And for those of you that don't know me, I hate kids. I despise kids. Woo! Yeah, thank you, right? Somebody in the crowd is smart enough to realize the pain the kids are. I, the thing is, like, I hate talking to kids because I know there's not an ounce of intellect I can receive from them. Like, say, I'm talking to you, Aiden. We're having a conversation. I say something, you say something. We both come out of the conversation a little bit smarter. I'm talking to a child, I say something, they say something, I come out of the conversation a little dumber. What it is. And have you ever seen how much energy kids have? I mean, it's unbelievable. I need to snort cocaine and shove ecstasy on my ass just to get half the natural high they've got. You ever, you ever seen a kid do this? You ever seen this happen? Just watch. Thirty goddamn minutes, that kid is wailing on his ass. Thirty minutes, and then he pretends he's Spider-Man and starts crawling the wall. I'm not gonna lie, the remote's sitting a foot away from me. I'm not gonna grab it and change the channel. Maybe I want to know how it slices and dices. All right, still a better conversation than I have with kids. Yeah, I hate kids. Also, I feel like it's sad when dogs have better attention spans than than, than kids do. Like, you can talk to the dog and be like, go sit, and then and lay, and then fetch, and the dumbass will bring you the tennis ball. You ever ask a kid to get you, like, a Coke or a beer from the bridge? Like, hey, Timmy, get me a Coke from the bridge. Timmy, Timothy. Timothy's in the back. I got 45 more minutes, Dad. I got 45 more minutes. I don't got damn beer, so I'm going to the gym to this house. Pack. You gotta have that pack, even if your refrigerator opens up. Get that pack. I hate kids. It's kind of unbelievable. I also hate when people talk like in a kid language. Like they have their own lingo with children. It's like, who wants to have dinner tonight? We're gonna go grab some cookies. No, bad, bad. Shame on you. I hate if we talk like that with adults. It's like, we're gonna get intoxicated tonight with alcohol, aren't we? We're gonna have a great time. Or we're we're gonna have sex tonight. That's going to happen. No, don't talk to her. Shame on you. Ground him. <laughs> Believe it or not, though, I was a kid once. Once in my life, I was a kid. And I was crazy as that sounds. I did have an eighth birthday once. Crazy birthday. See, when I was a kid, though, I was kind of like a gangster. I dressed like a gangster. I acted like a gangster. I was a wigger. That's who I was. And I was ashamed to admit it. Up until the eighth grade, then a guy told me, don't wear that red jacket again or you're going to get shot. And then I became this. So. <laughs> I'm not threatening. I mean, does anybody threaten? Well, let's be honest here. I got our guy's socks, okay? It's about as unthreatening as it gets. But as a kid, though, I was a gangster. I was angry, very angry. I became familiar with uh, one of one kid. He was a friend of mine. Um, based off the sole fact that we both like Nelly's song, it's getting hot in here. 
You guys remember that song? Getting hot here? Every time I walk in, like, yo, Nelly! Yo, Nelly, what's happening? It's cold outside, but what is going on? He's like, yo, I don't know, man, but I feel like it's getting hot in here. Six months. <laughs> Every day, I didn't even know the dumbass's name. That's, I, but I figured he was my best friend. I'm like, he knows so much about me. I know so much about him. I'm going to invite this guy to my eighth birthday party. So I'm like, yo, bro, come over. Have a good time. We'll share some Nelly lingo. We're good. He's like, hey, can I bring my bro over? That's fine. A bro, a bro plus a bro, all of Nellies, that's a Nelly son. No homo. But it's gonna be a great time. <laughs> so I open the doorbell, Nelly walks in. I'm like, yo, Nelly, what up? It's about to get hot in here. He's like, yo, man, yo, man, I got you a gift. And that's how I talk. You know what I mean? He's like, yo, man. So he gives me a gift. I open it up. It's a toy race car, monster truck. Awesome. Now, it was it was a good day. It was starting out really good. And then he said something that made me question the status of our friendship. Okay, I don't like sharing. I'm gonna be honest. When we go out Chinese food, my friends are like, hey, let's share dishes. No, I ordered my dish, you order your dish. That's staying that way. You can try my dish, maybe say I'll order that next time, but my food stays on my plate. If it doesn't happen, we're not friends. This is what the guy said. This is what Nelly said. He was like, yo man, how about we open your gift and we waste it around? In my head, I'm thinking, hell to the fuck no, bitch! This is my gift, I'm putting it here, we'll play with your shit if you brought your shit. This is mine. I only pretend like I want to have you people over because I get gifts. But no, I, was, I was kind of a pussy to say that, so I was like, you know, I, just, I, don't, see, I don't see how us playing with this is going to make things more fun. Because we have so much so many things planned. But feel free to disagree with me if, if you choose that I'm wrong. 30 minutes later, he disagreed with me. I'm crying on the slides of my, uh, of my jungle gyms in my backyard. I'm crying. I'm bawling. Meanwhile, my friend Jim, for those of you that haven't met him, he's six foot five in the fourth grade. He's huge. He's a giraffe. Okay? They're making him jump over this toy as they're racing. So he's standing there. He's bawling. He's like, I don't want to jump. This is wrong. This is a birthday party. Jim, they're two feet tall. You can step on them with your hooves and kill them. But now, he steps on my toy, breaks it, so I have to kick Nelly and his bro out of my house. Now, when I was a kid, I was chubby and I had long nails. So I was like, get the fuck out of my house! They left, and no longer did Nelly, the singer or the person, ever appear around. But then, I remembered, when I was a kid though, I was, I was always the business, business guy. Like I loved finance and all that stuff. Like I'd walk around and call myself business check. I didn't know what it meant. So I was like, bitch, I'm business check, I'm loaded with cash. Walk around with the green briefcase, I had monopoly money. Everywhere I went, I'm making it rain. Oh yeah. But I gotta pick it up. Because I know the value of money and it doesn't grow on trees. And I had everything accounted for. My hundreds my 10s, my 20s, 50s. If a single one was missing, I'd have to talk to my distributors. Now my distributors were the dumbass elementary kid students at my gym. And I know they were dumbasses, they were just laying on their arms. That dumbass doesn't even know what money is, so I, I, I should suspect that he stole it. But during Christmas time, I felt like it's time I should give back to people. I felt like they give me so much, it's time that I give back their kindness. So I told my dad, I'm like, well, dad, I need a big ass box. Get me a big ass box. That's how I speak with my father. Yo, dad, get me a big ass box. So he has this giant box, and I throw all my toys in it. Like broken wheel toys, missing eye toys, all that in this giant ass box. I tape it shut, I'm getting ready for Christmas. Now, when you're a kid, size means more than quality. So I figured that a Rolex has nothing to do with a box that's literally the size of my body. Christmas morning rolls around, I'm a big ballin'. What up, guys? How's it going? Oh, that's a small box. Oh, it's funny. That looks like a box my box could eat. Bam! No more gifts, that's it. I'm done. This is it for the next 10 years. Now, what this agreement meant, when they open this box, they get to rent my toys for five minutes. It's a lease slash rental agreement that I had set up as a child for my family. And when they got rowdy for disrespectful, I was taking my toys, this is bullshit, you guys don't deserve, and I, I'm gonna take, 
Dad, I need your help. This is a heavy ass box. I'm gonna need you to carry it up the stairs with me. But once that happens, nobody's getting any more gifts. A year later, I bring out a bigger box. Uh, but then I grow up, and my friends want me to do extreme things. I think my friends want to kill me. They take me on roller coasters, they take me skydiving. I don't, I don't like it, but I do it. This last summer, we went to uh, Sand Hollow. It's this, uh, it's this like reservoir down near St. George. So we go down there with a bunch of friends, and uh, it's a giant beach party, and they've got these water jet packs. You guys heard of that? You guys know what that is? Yeah. Those are pretty much giant like Iron Man apparatuses that shoot you out of the water 10 or 15 feet in the air. They're awesome. That's a lot. So we get there, and my friends are like, we should go do that. I'm like, you know, we have so many other things to do. Like, I just don't see how we'll have time to shoot a body that water. Like, feel free to disagree with me. And 30 minutes later, they disagree with me. So we were stuck in line, signing a 50-page waiver on an iPad. Bam. Oh, I know, I'll sign away my testicles for some fish in the water. I don't know. Point is, they own my, they own my testicles now. So we get into the water. We're trying to get in. And the instructor says, oh, have a, have a great time. Oh, but before I forget, stay in taxi position at all times. Now, taxi position is where you're laying flat in the water, head out like a goose, looking like a complete dumbass. That's what it is. That's taxi position. And then we're like, okay, cool. So we're getting in the water. Oh, but before I forget, if you don't stay in taxi position, you're going to invert yourself, you're going to fly in the water, break your back, and your neck is going through your ass. So that's the part that got me. It's like, it's not that I'm scared of necks throwing through asses. My fear is that I have never seen a neck through an ass injury. I don't know what that looks like. I don't want to know what that looks like. This guy's clearly seen it, and he knows it's bad. So I'm getting in the water. I step in, I'm a foot in, bam, I'm in taxi position. I'm floating. I'm floating around. My instructor's like, you know, you don't have any equipment on you. You're good. Yeah, I know that. I just want to make sure that you knew I was in taxi position. So we get out halfway in the water. I'm flowing in taxi position, like always. My instructor says, stand up. Now this is the part where I started laughing. So I'm like, well, this is a trick question. And clearly I passed it, because you want me to say no, and, and then I pass the test, and we're good, right? Or maybe you don't want me to say that, you want my neck going through my ass. And again, I don't know what that injury looks like, I don't want to see. He asked me again, no, you're good, stand up out of water. So at this point, I'm just getting angry at him. I'm like, this is unbelievable. Maybe he's seen a neck through an ass injury, and you haven't, and you've been telling your friends that you're gonna find a dumbass to do it, and I'm not that kind of person. So 30 minutes of this exchange goes on. Finally, I stand up, get up out of the water. Meanwhile, my brother is like 10 feet away. He's like 15 feet in the water, doing tricks, having an awesome time. Meanwhile, I'm standing, he turns on the jetpack. I fly in the air two feet, <laughs> I'm in the water. Okay? At this point, he doesn't shut it off, and I'm running 30 miles an hour through the water into the middle of this reservoir. Now, I don't know if you've ever been shot through water at 30 miles an hour, but at that point, you are the body of water. Water's going through your mouth, in through your lungs, and out of your ass. I'm in the water, and my instructor is in the back saying, you are doing awesome. Fantastic job, kid. And I don't know why, but I find the need to apologize to him. So I'm like yelling as much as I can. I'm really sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. This is unbelievable. No, man, you are doing awesome. So if I, I'm doing awesome at drowning, so that's good to know. When somebody tells you that, you think of one of two things. Either, yeah, you're awesome at drowning, or this man wants you to die. Finally, we get out of the water. I'm dehydrated. Don't know how that happened. And I got a mild concussion. But the important thing is, my neck and my ass are in the same position as when I went into the water. Thanks, you guys have been great. And thank you guys, we are so glad to find us. We're gonna have Gabby Sergisian and uh, Jasmine Martinez and Aben. They're all gonna come up, they're gonna perform. We have a Facebook page, Instagram, check us out. We're gonna do more shows, we have a lot of videos on YouTube. So uh, tell us what you think, thank you.